What's going on guys, Billy here, and the DJI M300 is one of the largest and most feature-packed drones that I've had the pleasure of flying. I said the same exact thing in my first flight video with this drone. It is the largest aircraft that I featured here on my channel. I mean, typically, I'm flying drones like the Mavic, right? The Mavic 3, the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. Drones that are foldable and can almost fit inside of your pocket, but this drone is in an entirely different class. Now, with that said, what I want to do in today's video is cover everything this drone has to offer from the hardware to the software and it's going to be a pretty long video because it can do a lot. So looking at the aircraft as a whole, it's obviously big and heavy. I have this Mavic 3 sitting next to it just to give you a rough size comparison to DJI's flagship consumer level drone. But again, remember, the M300 is built for jobs that a drone like the Mavic just wouldn't be able to accommodate. The weight of the aircraft is also up there, but something funny to note is that the batteries make up almost half of the aircraft's weight. In order to fly, you need two of them. They mount to the drone side by side in the back, and each of them weigh just about three pounds. Having this dual battery system is great for redundancy so that if one fails you can still land with the other supplying power to the drone. You can also hot swap the battery so that you never lose power to the drone. This means less time on the ground in between flights. Now each of these batteries hold a ton of power giving the M300 a whopping 55 minutes of flight time with no payload attached. Of course this number will decrease as weight is added on from the camera and different payloads but it is still impressive. Now as we work our way around the video I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions regarding the different payloads that can be attached to the M300, which for the sake of this video, I put down on the ground because it's way too big to keep up here on the table. But regarding those payloads, the one that I have here is the H20T. This is, I would say, the flagship camera that goes along with the M300. And I'm going to give this camera its own separate video. So today's video is going to be entirely about the M300 aircraft itself. We're not going to be discussing payloads, but stay tuned on the channel because I will be touching more on these cameras in the future in their own separate video. Okay, so now that we've covered some of the more general things to know about the M300, it's time to dive in closely to highlight all of the different hardware components. On the end of each of the arms are the antennas strategically placed to give you the best connection to the drone from your remote controller. Specifically speaking, the two tall antennas on the front legs are for your transmission, while the rounded ones on the back legs are DRTK antennas. They're positioned far away from the body to mitigate interference and give you a stronger connection back to your remote controller. Speaking of the body, this middle section is really what we're going to be focusing on because of all of the different sensors and components. I figure the best way that we can go about this is focus on one side of the drone at a time because no matter which side of the aircraft that you look at, you've always got some sort of camera or sensor pointing right at you. To start things off, we'll look straight on at the front, which has an FPV camera, two infrared sensors, and two vision cameras. That FPV camera is always on and is always looking straight ahead so that you can pull it up at any time within the pilot application to see where the drone is flying when moving straight ahead. Flipping up to the top side of the drone, starting from the front and working our way to the back, we have a fan for ventilation, an array of ports for connecting modules to the drone and the drone itself into the computer, which are covered by these rubber stoppers to keep water and debris out. In the middle is an upward light beacon to aid the pilot and others in seeing the M300 in low light scenarios, the power button to turn the aircraft on and off, another set of vents for dissipating heat, and then all the way on the back is a dual set of upward facing auxiliary LEDs and two more infrared sensors and two more vision sensors. On the bottom side or the belly of the drone, we have a lot of similar sensors and lights that we found on top. Working our way from the front to the back, we have our dual payload mount system, fans for more ventilation, two bottom facing auxiliary LEDs, another light beacon for helping those on the ground see the drone in the air, two infrared sensors, and two vision sensors. Now the sides and the back of the drone are bare in comparison to all of the others as the battery takes up a majority of the space, but there are still dual sets of infrared and vision sensors on each side to help the drone see different obstacles in every single direction. Okay, so to sum all of that up, on the six different sides of the M300, we have 24 total sensors, 12 of which are the infrared sensors and the other 12 are vision sensors, all of which give you omnidirectional obstacle avoidance so that the drone can see obstacles no matter which direction it's flying up, down, left, right, forwards, backwards, and it also has six lights that really light up the area around the drone and help it see in low light. The two beacons are positioned well so that no matter what your height is or what direction you're flying, you can see them in the air and the auxiliary LEDs put out a ton of light to help the drone's sensors see in low light like when you're landing or if you're flying under a canopy of trees. Now it is absolutely no secret that the M300 is a very 
very expensive drone and sometimes flying a drone of this caliber or even using a piece of equipment that is this expensive can be a little bit nerve-wracking but remember this is a work drone it's a workhorse built for law enforcement for search and rescue operations firefighters for detecting heat signatures within the flames right for monitoring fires it's used for uh, individuals and companies for high level inspection so again this is a workhorse drone it's not something you're going to buy to just zip around in your backyard and take photos to send to your friends with that being said, with this drone here on loan, it's not mine. I never had a care in the world about accidentally crashing it while I was in the sky because of those 24 sensors that I mentioned. I think it's important to note that with a drone of this size and of this caliber, you just need to fly responsibly and not put the drone in a position where it could potentially crash. But for those instances where you do need to fly in tight quarters, don't worry because those sensors have definitely got you covered. To dive a little bit deeper, the infrared time of flight sensors all the way around the drone are able to detect obstacles in every single direction up to 40 meters away which is about 131 feet this means that the drone has a massive radius or a massive bubble around it to keep it safe in the air on this topic of safety i want to take the time to mention some of the other features that are built inside of the m300 sitting on the ground over there that make this drone the absolute safest dji drone to fly and honestly one of the safest drones that's in the air right now the main theme of the m300 is redundancy so for every point of failure that this drone has there's always something that's put into place that can act as a backup so the drone doesn't fall from the sky tumble from the sky so that it doesn't crash in anything or so that it overall just doesn't fail you now dji actually published a three-page pdf that goes over this redundancy and other safety features of the m300 more in depth so if you want to read everything it has to say i'll leave a link to it below but for the sake of this video we're going to trim this down into the most important information so i've put together a list of 16 different redundant and safe safety features pulled from that PDF that are built into the M300. I'm going to put the list up here on the screen so that you guys can follow along with me, but we'll rip down through here and just kind of mention each of these points so you guys can get an understanding of just how safe this drone is. So we've got dual IMUs, dual barometers, dual RTK antennas, and dual transmission antennas, as well as dual compasses. All of these components are basically required for the drone to even fly. So if you lost one of these components, let's say you had a single IMU drone, the IMU failed, it went bad, the drone would then tumble from the sky. So all of these are critical for the drone to fly properly. And if you lost one of them, then you probably would end up losing your drone. So it's good that for these critical components, we have a backup option so that the drone can switch over to the other component in case of a massive failure. Moving down the list here, these next three points touch on something we've already covered. The drone has six pairs of vision sensors and six pairs of infrared time of flight sensors. Those are the 24 sensors around the entire drone that allow it to detect and avoid obstacles. We also have the six auxiliary lights, so the two beacons and the four auxiliary lights to help see the drone at nighttime. Moving on here, we've got control signal redundancy through something that's called pulse width modulation signals. Now I've got to read this word for word because it's kind of over my head, but basically these signals are used by default for communication between the flight control system and the electric speed controller system. So in the highly unlikely case that they become unavailable, then the UART communication link will take over to keep the critical control signals stable and secure. Now, moving down the list here, we have a dual intelligent battery system. So in order to fly the M300, it takes two batteries that slide into the back of the drone. And this is great for redundancy. So if one of the batteries fails, you can then use the other battery to continue to fly the drone and land it. So they are completely separate and it's great to be able to carry two of them for, of course, longer flight time, but for redundancy purposes. Uh, they're also self-heating. That's another added bonus. So if you're in a very cold climate, the batteries will heat themselves up to the proper temperature to then fly and get the best use out. Out of them. Um, you also have a dual transmission link. So basically this is just saying that there are two antennas. So in case one antenna fails, you can still fly the drone using the other antenna. So it's a good redundant backup option. Uh, also, it has a dual remote controller mode. So you can have two pilots controlling the same drone. So in case one controller malfunctions, the other controller can be used to bring the drone back, land it down safely and figure out what went wrong. Um, all right. This one is crazy. The three propeller emergency landing. I've seen it happen through a video. I'm going to leave a link in the description because I don't want to put in this video and deal with any copyright. But basically, if you lose a motor, the drone will spiral down to the ground in a controlled manner so that you don't harm any property, you don't hurt anybody on the ground, and so that you 
probably most importantly, don't damage your drone. There's going to be very significant or very little damage compared to the significant damage that would happen on like a phantom drone if you lost the motor and just tumbled down to the ground. So that is a really, really cool feature. Uh, also, you have a FPV camera inside of the drone so that in case your main camera fails, if I've got my H20T hanging from the bottom and for some reason this camera fails, I've got the FPV camera inside of the M300 to fall back on. And finally, it has a ADS-B receiver, which is great because I'm then able to tell where the manned aircraft are around my drone. Now, I've got two extra shout outs that weren't mentioned in that PDF, but I figured I'd include them in this list. This drone is IP45 water resistant. It's not waterproof, but it will provide you with some protection from the elements. And also you have DJI's fleet health management system to be able to check on the components of the drone and make sure that it's overall safe to fly. Now, remember, like I mentioned, all of this information was pulled directly from that PDF that DJI published. So if you want a little bit more information about what I went over here in this section of the video, I'll leave a link to that down in the description. Now, all the hardware talk is great, right? All the different sensors, all the different components, all the different fail safes that the M300 has built into it really do make it special and make this drone stand out as one of the safest drones you can fly. But what about the software? Because that's another really big thing that makes the M300 such a great option. So I guess a good place to start when talking about software is specs. The four things that always matter to anyone flying drones is the speed, the wind resistance, the flight time, and the range, all of which are absolutely solid on this drone. It's fast, it can handle a lot of wind, it can fly for a very long time depending on what the payload situation is like. For example, with the H20T that I'm using, I'll get approximately 43 minutes of flight time. Here's a chart that DJI has published to show you what your flight time will be with different single payloads and combinations of payloads. The range is also phenomenal as well as the general connection from the remote controller to the drone and vice versa. DJI always does such a great job with their OcuSync transmission system and one of the things that you really need to understand is that with the M300 you aren't going to have any of those connection issues that you might experience with other drones that don't use a dedicated system like DJI does in their drones. Now in terms of the intelligent flight features, DJI has implemented a lot of the same technology that we've seen in previous drones from their consumer as well as their enterprise side, but because the M300 now has upgraded hardware, it's able to take better advantage of those intelligent flight features and actually makes them better. For example, Active Track and Spotlight are intelligent flight features that have been in DJI's drones for years. They use camera based tracking to keep the camera focused on a selected subject, making the filming process easier. You don't have to worry about camera movement, the drone does all of the work for you. In a similar regard, with the M300, the Smart Track function allows you to select the subject for the camera to focus on and track. Notice how it analyzes the scene for potential subjects that you might want to select by placing small yellow dots over them. Simply pressing on one of these will snap the camera onto the subject, thus enabling smart track. From here, the zoom camera keeps the drone trained on the subject by automatically adjusting the zoom gimbal pitch, and rotation of the aircraft, so you don't have to worry about the drone crashing. It completes all of its movements from a stationary position. Now, taking this feature to the next level is the laser rangefinder that is also constantly determining the position of the subject that you're looking at. It then displays this information in real time on the map through a red crosshair. Aside from the visual view from those cameras, you can also use that laser rangefinder built into the H20 and H20T cameras to determine the real-time location of the subject that you're tracking and its distance from the drone. The distance is displayed in the top left section of the pilot app, while the position of where you're pointing the rangefinder at is displayed by a red crosshair on the map. All this information can be relayed back to your team using DJI's Flight Hub. Also making use of the laser rangefinder, you can set points through DJI's pinpoint feature that display through augmented reality icons within the pilot app, just like the home point does. This is helpful for remembering certain locations for inspections, but it's also helpful for sending key information back to your team, again, using Flight Hub. I would say that the general theme of the intelligent flight features built into the M300 is data collection, and being able to collect all that data and instantly transmit it back to your team makes this drone that much more powerful. The rest of the intelligent flight features deal with the realm of autonomy, so giving the drone commands and then letting it do the rest of the work. These features include live mission recording, waypoints 2.0, and AI spot check. Now, live mission recording and waypoints 2.0 really takes a lot of the repeated, tedious flying out of inspection work with drones. If you're actively inspecting the same towers, the same buildings, the same roofs, or just the same general areas, taking the time to set a waypoint mission for that specific project will make all of your future visits 
a whole lot easier and it will ensure that you capture consistent images and data every single time. Both of these modes can be found within the mission flight section of the pilot app and the interface is both powerful and easy to read. It totally blows the customization that the DJI Go app gave you on drones like the Phantom 4 and Mavic 2 out of the water as you get full control over what the drone is doing at every single second during its flight. Now moving away from the drone itself, I want to take some time to touch on the remote controller that comes shipped with the M300 because after all, this is what you'll be interfacing with every single time that you want to fly this drone. If you're familiar with DJI's smart controller, then you'll feel right at home with this remote. But if we put it right next to that same remote controller, you'll notice that quite a bit is different between the two. Probably the most notable is the massive piece on the bottom that allows for the attachment of an extra battery, increasing the usage time from 2.5 hours to 4.5 hours. So it gives you an extra two hours of flight time. This extra piece also includes a USB-C port for charging and a bracket on the back that allows you to stand the remote controller up. The addition of this external battery really is great as it solves one of my largest problems with the smart controller and that is the battery life, right? You get two and a half hours out of the internal battery, which yeah, is great, but you're probably going to be flying the M300 for a very long amount of time. I mean, it's going to be brought on all day missions and two and a half hours just won't cut it. And what's great is that with these external batteries, you can continue to feed the remote controller battery after battery after battery, essentially giving it an unlimited amount of runtime. Now also added with the enter Enterprise version of the smart controller is three mounting points for a lanyard that evenly balance the remote to keep it upright when dangling from your neck. They also added this small rubber piece around the sticks of the remote controller that help keep debris out and adds a little bit of tension to the sticks when flying, which makes the flight experience feel a little bit more precise. The M300 also gives you the ability to utilize two remote controllers. As DJI shows on their website, you can actually have two pilots positioned in different areas to intercept that connection, which is great for strategic long range missions. Now, as we move away from the remote controller, I quickly want to jump inside of the screen and share with you some of the features that I really enjoy about the DJI Pilot application because they've done a really great job building out this app to work perfectly with the M300. For one, the amount of customization allowed for the custom buttons is truly incredible. Not only do you have a long list of custom actions to choose from when pressing any of the back or front custom buttons, but you can also set custom actions to happen when pressing a combination of buttons like the C one and upwards on the 5D button, giving you even more options to choose from when flying. The flight interface is also great on the smart controller, giving you a ton of information about the M300 speed, attitude, altitude, wind speed and direction, aircraft velocity, rangefinder distance, and more. Now, the final thing I want to touch on to conclude our full walkthrough of the M300 aircraft is the charger. And it's not just some power brick that charges one battery at a time. No, instead... <laughs> It is a massive case with wheels that you can use to transport multiple batteries at once and charge all of your batteries at once. Now, as you just saw, this thing can get insanely heavy when it's fully loaded with batteries, but this really is the best method that I've seen for any drone, both consumer and enterprise, to charge and transport your batteries. Inside of the case are slots to hold eight total TB60 flight batteries and four of the external remote batteries. Once you open up the case, there's a single cord that plugs into the wall, and just like with all of DJI's battery hubs, it'll begin to charge the set of batteries that has the most amount of charge and work its way down. Overall, this is a really simple system to manage your batteries, and I really like it. And so with that, I believe that that is absolutely everything that you need to know about DJI's M300 aircraft. Remember, we're going to touch on the payloads in a separate video, but we pretty much covered everything about the hardware, the software, all the different sensors, all the different features, the charging situation, the remote controller, the pilot application. I mean, we touched on absolutely everything that this drone can do, but there's still a lot to learn about the M300. So if you are somebody that owns this drone, if your company owns this drone, feel free to go ahead and check out the playlist down in the description of all of my M300 videos. I'm trying to make as many as I can while I have this drone on loan so that I can share the information with you guys and help you make better use of your M300. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on this behemoth of a drone and I'll talk to you later. Peace.